normally this is where I would say let's jump over to Visual Studio though, but we're not going to look at code actually. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different than I usually do on this channel. Usually, I'm walking you through some C-sharp code or talking about some general software engineering guidance that I want to be able to provide you, but this time it's going to be different. I had some feedback from colleagues at Microsoft as well as my newsletter subscribers that you wanted to see some different type of content on my channel. In particular, it had to do with ASP.NET, Blazor, and building things you want to see real things being built. So I decided that I'm going to kick off a series of videos where we're going to build an ASP.NET Core Blazor web application. And it's not just going to be the next budgeting or calculator app. And not that there's anything wrong with those, but I wanted to build something real that I'm going to use. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned, check that pinned comment for a link to my newsletter, and let's jump into things. Normally, this is where I would say let's jump over to Visual Studio though, but we're not going to look at code, actually. I'm going to spend some time drawing on a virtual whiteboard. That's why I have this. I picked up a little drawing tablet so that I can start drawing some system and block diagrams in my videos and be able to provide some different type of content for you. But before I start drawing, I wanted to talk about what we're going to build. And in particular, I wanted to talk about who we're building it for and why we're building it. You see, something that I want to be able to bring to the channel is that I have years of developing software for real customers. And I want to make sure that when I'm helping educate this audience, I'm not just talking about building things in C-sharp. There's nothing wrong with that. I like being able to provide that type of content, but I have expertise in shipping value to customers. And when we start framing things as being able to deliver value to customers, we start looking at software differently. So while I think it's extremely valuable that you spend time building side projects, building hobby things, and just being able to build things in general, I think that there's something to be said about shifting that a little bit towards being able to ship value to customers. And the big difference is that you start to have constraints when you have customers. Like, I love to refactor code. If I could just keep refactoring the same code over and over and making it more clean and tidy and trying out different patterns, I would waste a lot of time doing that, but enjoy it. But when you're trying to ship value to customers, you don't have that luxury. And sometimes that means leaving code in a little bit of a gross situation. So it just means that we have to be thinking about the next biggest priority for shipping value to customers. So it's a different mindset when we go into this kind of thing. So I wanted to start with what we're building and for who. We're going to build something that's pretty simple in theory. It's just going to be a dashboard for analytics about different social media and publishing platforms. That's it. These types of things exist across these different platforms like TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. But a lot of these metrics are split out across different platforms, the platforms that you're getting metrics for. And what I want to be able to do is bring that all into one spot and have it be extensible for the different platforms that I'm engaged in. So as we go through this exercise, I'm technically going to be the customer that we're building for. But I think we can make me a little bit more generic. And it's going to be someone who's trying to publish content across different platforms, and they're tired of going to different spots to see all of it. And the other part is that we want to be able to extend this to different types of platforms that we're engaged in. So the problem that we're solving for this type of individual, I mean, me in this case, is that instead of having disparate analytics spread out everywhere, I want one dashboard in one spot that allows me to see the growth of my social presence all in one spot. And that was the other key part is that I want to see the historical growth of my social presence. That means it's not sufficient just to reach out to, say, the API that Facebook might offer for your follower growth or something like that. I want to be able to see it growing, I mean, hopefully growing over time, and have that trended and plotted on a graph. So it's pretty simple in theory. I think that that's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to start with who we're building it for and why, because I think that's an important thing that we have to consider when we're trying to get a market for a product or something we want to build to be able to ship to people. Now, in real life, we might be spending some time for market fit and things like that, doing competitor analysis, but we're going to assume that that kind of stuff is out of the way, and I want to talk about what I like to do next for putting some systems together in order to try and solve problems. And I like to start with really high level block diagrams. So this is where I'm going to switch over to my drawing tablet and let's check out some ideas. 
So I should preface this. I'm pretty terrible at drawing, so buckle up and hopefully this is going to be helpful. When I start getting into a system like this, I'm not trying to pick out specific technologies like, am I going to have a MySQL database? I mean, like, I don't even know if I need a database, right? Like, I want to get into some of these really high-level thoughts. And for this, I want to start thinking about what's available, right? Because when I was talking about the problem statement, I was thinking, like, there's already analytics for these platforms, but what does that look like? like and why isn't that working well for us so if i think about what's going on i want to draw like some type of clouds and um, these are going to be the different say social platforms that we have to work with right so these blobs i'm just drawing this vertical line to sort of delineate this external part of the system that we're talking about um, with these different uh, you know social platforms or uh, it could be like uh, medium or other publishing platforms so these services exist online and whether or not they have an API to them to be able to get analytics, um, that's one way. So like we could be asking this, uh, you know, to go fetch analytics. So some API, um, maybe for uh, this platform D here, right? Maybe for that one, uh, there's no API, but we want to be able to, to scrape data for it. So uh, instead of that, we have... Um, you know, some something where we could go to that site, we could do some scraping. We don't really know quite yet what's going to be available to us, but the way that I'm thinking about this is that these types of things exist right now, right? Like I could go write a scraper for a web page or check if there's an API, uh, but that's only going to fetch me what currently exists. So that's one part of the puzzle. And I think this is important to call out too, that I'm, I'm trying to break down the problem into smaller pieces, right? So we have some type of data fetching going on. The other thing that I called out is that I want to see this plotted onto, you know, a chart, some type of user interface. And I'm, I want to build this in Blazor. Um, <laughs> if you're building things for your customers, you want to think about what platform and stuff you're going to build for. But like in my particular case, it's not important that it's Blazor. It's just that that's what the audience has asked for. So I'm tailoring it to that. Um, I highly recommend you pick things that, you know, you pick frameworks and tools that are aligned to, uh, you know, your skill set. What's going to allow you to ship value to customers effectively? Don't just pick things because it's the shiny new thing. So this is, you know, purposefully selected as Blazor for content creation, but it could be built in anything, to be honest, right now. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't build this in Blazor personally because Blazor is not where my skill set is. I have more experience building ASP.NET Core backends, and then for front ends, it's even though I'm not good at React, I have more experience in React. But part of this is going to be that I'm learning Blazor and I'm teaching you along the way too. But that means that I need something, you know, I need some user interface. It's gonna have some chart with these lines on it. Um, hopefully that's social growth going up and to the right, but this is some, UI that we have and challenge is that <laughs> we need to get that data that we're we're being able to fetch and we need to put it on the UI but it's not that straightforward because otherwise we would just wire this up directly you know have it wired up to the UI but I mentioned that I want to have historical data to me that's a critical part because I want to be able to see this growing over time. So I am going to need some type of storage. I'm going to draw that right here. So we have some type of database. Um, what kind of database is it? No idea. Postgres? Is it MySQL? Is it MongoDB? It could be anything, right? I don't know and I don't care right now, but I think that I need to have some type of database. And the reason I say that is because um, I want to be able to have something running right? I don't know what it is, but that's going to be calling all of the code, you know, doing this part here, right? It's going to call that stuff. And then it's going to take that and put it into the database. So that way we can have something running uh, on a schedule or something like that. And it's going to be fetching data or scraping periodically, however it needs to work. Um, so this right here, is actually the part that's going to be um, gluing together, if you will, the API endpoints that we have to the database. But now the next part is that once we have it in the database, I feel like it's pretty straightforward to be able to um, have the UI, you know, go through some, whether it's like a layered architecture or we could do vertical slicing, whatever it happens to be, but our UI will be able to call into our, our backend, 
and uh, access the database. So this is going to be a Blazor app and it's going to access our database and the database will be populated through some type of scheduled work that will be calling these APIs um, for these different platforms. Now that's a really high level overview of the different pieces. Of course, when we start building this, we're going to have to get into more specifics. So I'm not trying to gloss over that. I just want to show you my thought process for being able to get some blocks drawn out. Now, the other thing, and you might have predicted this if you watched some of my other content, is that this is absolutely going to use plugins for being able to build this out. And that's because we want to be able to support many social and publishing platforms that have analytics. And I, as the end user, want to make sure that I can extend this to other platforms that I want to be able to watch the growth of. So the thing that I want to try drawing here is the sort of high level idea around plugins, right? So if I'm going to go back to having this kind of barrier to the different platforms that we have to work with. So we have, um, I'm just going to draw a couple of them. These are supposed to be like a cloud shape, but I'm terrible at drawing, like I said. So that's not a B. That's a B. And then, so A, B, C, D. I'm going to deal with four for now, right? So these are sort of out the web. <laughs> so that's out on the web. And what we want to be able to do is talk about how we have access to these different types of things. So what I'm thinking about doing, if you recall, I talked about having something like a scheduler. So I'm going to put a scheduler there. And the way that this scheduler is going to work, at least in my mind in the beginning, is that I need it to be able to access the APIs. But we have A, B, C, D written right now. And literally, I can think about 15 platforms that I want to be able to support. And there's going to be more that come. So the idea is that it needs to be extensible. So I want to think about how to minimize the impact of that. So this is where some of the design patterns and stuff come into play, right? But I'm going to be doing like plugins here and I want to have a facade in front of it. So I want to explain that. My thought process is that each platform that we want to integrate with needs to have a plugin associated with it, okay? And the reason that it needs that is because each platform that we want to talk to is going to have its own way to get analytics, whether it is an API or whether it's web scraping or, or whatever it happens to be, right? I need to have a plugin to be able to do that. And when I say a plugin, the way that you can conceptualize this right now is like, I just need custom code per platform to be able to interact with it. But the reason that I'm already jumping to having a plugin is because I'm thinking of, and I've built systems like this, right? I'm thinking about the rest of the code that needs to call into this. What I don't want to do is build a system where, okay, I have, you know, these different platforms that I have to interact with. And every time I add a platform, I need to go touch code in like a hundred spots, right? Every time I add a new feature, I have to go make sure it's supported with this new plugin. Like that's not scalable. And the way that I work around that is I build plugins. So when I say a plugin, it's that it has a common interface or as much as possible, a common interface. So that means these plugins that I have listed here from A to D, they all have a different implementation, but to the code that we have on the left-hand side, like the system we're building, it's going to have a common API in C Sharp that we can work with. And what we can do is put what I call a facade in front of that. So I'm going to put an F for facade. And that means that when we go to use the scheduler and it will say on whatever schedule, I mean, we can look at different frameworks for building the scheduler, but the idea behind it is that it will execute some code that in my opinion needs to be able to somehow talk to these plugins. And like I said, instead of having to custom code every single part of this to support a new plugin, we want to go through this facade. So we simply go through here and then the facade knows how to go to these individual pieces. That way, it always just looks like one in and out on the facade itself. So the way that that will work is that we have to make sure that we have something that we're providing on here. It could be, um, you know, it could be an index for the plugin. It could be some other types of parameters. It could just be nothing. And we say, hey, hey, facade, go get me all of the analytics and it will go enumerate you know, all of the plugins that we have and pull back the uh, full result set. So I don't know the right implementation of that right now. And at this point, it doesn't matter because we're not coding it. But the thought process is putting this facade layer in place 
for the different plugins. So that way we have this type of thing going on and they can cross the uh, the barrier that's out to the web and inside of our code, like everything that we're putting over here becomes isolated, even from our own plugins. We don't have to worry about having a million different spots touch each of these plugins. They just go through the facade. And that's why I love this design pattern. I know I said at the beginning of this, I wasn't going to focus on design patterns and stuff, but the facade here is so helpful because it helps shield us from all this complexity that can come up with the plugins. So um, I think it's a great fit for this type of thing. All right, so we had a very high level look at some different parts of this system that we're thinking about building. And a quick recap is that it's going to be a Blazor app. It's going to be able to support many plugins for different social media and publishing platforms that we can pull analytics from, and it will have something that can go talk to those different APIs through a facade to try and reduce the complexity inside of our code and kind of push that all to the plugin level. But it will call those different plugins, get those analytics, and we're going to put that into a database. We haven't talked about the schema or anything yet. That'll come later when we start going into the code. And the UI that we're going to build in Blazor will be able to end up accessing our database. We'll have things like repository patterns, and we'll try to put some entity framework in there to access our database. I think that will be good to cover as well. And I think that this is going to be an awesome little tool that I can get put together. I'll have the repo shared, and you can follow along with the video series as well as the repo itself. So um, when it's all posted, I'll try to see even if I can accept pull requests, and the cadence of these videos going out might be slower than what's happening on the repository. So when that's all posted up, I'll make sure to update the description and the pinned comments so you can have that. And then you may find that the repository itself is, you know, going faster than the video series. So feel free to follow along in both. And uh, if you're interested in more stuff like this, this began on my newsletter. So if you're subscribed to my newsletter, and like I said at the beginning of this, that'll be in the pinned comment, you can see this kind of stuff before it becomes live on YouTube and have some more like uh, insight early on. So hopefully this sounds like an interesting series. I'm personally excited to build this because I want to use it. I told myself that if I was going to do something like this and have a build along, that it needs to be something I'm going to use. I don't have a lot of time to go building other things. I spend a lot of time on my side project that's called Meal Coach, and that's a full on, you know, web application that has customers using it. So I dedicate a lot of time to that outside of my nine to five. And this felt like a good platform. It seems simple enough and it seems like it would be helpful. So stay tuned follow along and let's build some blazer stuff together. Thanks and I'll see you next time.